Hello and welcome to a day with the car driver covering the spring 2012 season as we continue our look at the, old, the last decade in anime. I'm here with Day. And I'm here with Scamp. Hello. I'm also here with Rowlet. Uh, yes, with your Rowlet bag. Uh, and the spring 2012 season, to be honest, like last season, like winter 2012 was pretty eventful. Mm. So, will spring 2012 the same? Oh, maybe not to quite the same degree, although there were certainly a lot of shows that people went in for. Hmm. Of course, there were also some shows that people were hideously disappointed in. For some reason, Eureka 7 is leaping out at me at the moment. We're going straight for Eureka 7 sequel. Yeah, God, why not? I had some really good music. I okay. Remember, I remember that, and I... God... It made me wonder whether the original Eureka 7 was actually that good in the first place. Huh. They keep making Eureka 7 stuff. I don't get it. Well, it must be selling, I right? I guess so. There must be just these... Weren't there some stuff. movies? That... Oh, they keep making them. And like by all accounts, it sounds like they're not good, but they keep making them. Yep, yeah, so must, someone must be going to They must them. be people who just like hopeless romantics for the Renton, Renton and El Reca. Her name's Eureka, but they call her El Reca. No, they say no. That is not how they say it. I remember seeing one episode of the dub, and they call her like, Eureka. Eureka. Yeah, yes. that's not El Reca. Okay. I watched the dub of the original AO. I watched actually. I think I may have watched all of Eureka Seven AO. No, you dropped it before the last episode. Okay. Yes, because we looked at my mouth. Yes, I dropped it one episode before the end. You know. Re Again, really good music. This is just a reminder to me that me and Bones don't really tend to gel. Wasn't this a Bones? Yeah, well, the Yuka 7 series in general is Bones. It's when there are a few, a handful of anime original stuff. You must... There must be a load of Bones stuff that you do totally like. The original Full Metal oh, Alchemist Most adaptation? But, like, they've done so much this... Didn't they do, like, um... Uh, the Giant Hole? No, I that was a spin-off studio. No, it wasn't. That was a spin-off studio. Giant Hole. <laughs> Made in Abyss? Yeah, a Giant Hole. <laughs> That's what it I was like, Aquarian Evil? <laughs> I was like, no, they definitely didn't do that. Uh, did Bones win anything this season? Eureka 7 out. Yeah, oh. part, I guess they would have had their hands full with that. They don't... I mean, do they tend to do multiples in a season? No, they're not that big a studio. I uh, know I was looking at one of the seasons... In our review, and I was shocked at how many things Satellite had done. Mm. Speaking of evil, but that also wraps us into AKB0048. <coughs> you know, I'm still somewhat amazed at this show in that this should not have been any good. This show should have just been garbage. I mean, I remember the No Idols missile from the first episode. Yep, yeah, that wasn't... That was funny. Mm. That wasn't... This is, like, puerile garbage. Mm. So, AKB-0048, it's, I mean, it's a vehicle for AKB-48. The irony being that I don't think anyone was voiced by any of the ones from AKB-48 anyway. Well, the, the plot of it, so, like, nowadays they make loads of idol shows, but they're all copying the Love Life format, which is... We are going to be an idol group, or that, or, like... I mean, that's always been the format, though. But that's not what it is for a AKB 0048. Is no, like AKB 0048 is future. the dystopic sci fi show in which you end up having this like kind of weird meditation on, yeah, but what is an idol anyway? But not in the way that most idol shows do. Hmm. It's like <sighs> there's basically an idol religion in it, it's pretty bizarre. It's a bit, I would say, you know, it bears a bit more in common with, um... Macross? Well, yeah, Macross than it does with, say, Love Live or Idol Master, for that matter. Mm. Uh, it shouldn't work. It's actually a pretty fun show. Um, it's very colorful. I still don't dig the music, but, mm. you know, it tells a story. There's these three girls, and... They're on this kind of backwater-type planet, and they live in... It's not an empire. I guess it kind of is. It's like a confederation where uh, pop culture's been completely outlawed. So being an idol fan is not okay. And one of the girls, her dad is big in the, you know, suppression of pop culture thing. But they happen uh. to catch a concert as children. And then they're like, I want to be an idol too! 
And so they send in audition tapes and guess what? They get picked to do more auditions. So they have to escape their planet. And it's very silly in a lot of ways while also having a lot of heart, which again, it should not have. It's an advertisement for AKP48. The idol industry is sleazy as hell. This shouldn't have been a good show, but it was. I'm just, of all the things we started with this season, we started with Eureka 7 AO and AKB 004. Let's move on to like the other big show of the season, Zetman. Oh my God. Look, I only wanted to bring this up because I think this was Madhouse, wasn't it? I think so. This was, you know, when they were, so Zetman wasn't one of their Marvel collabs, no. but it feels like it's sort of of that same In, wheelhouse. I was just thinking now, I think Zetman was trying to be Devilman. Oh, maybe. You know, I just think oh, about yeah, it. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, it just suddenly, suddenly clicked for me in my head there. It's like, oh, that's what this is trying to be. God, but it was a weird point in time to try to be that, wasn't it? Well, I mean, Devilman is a big cultural touch point. It is, but point. this wasn't a moment where it was having any sort of no. also regurgening. The, also, the guy had a condom under his skin. Yeah. How could you take that from me? I wanted to talk about this show so I could point that out. And you just swooped in and stole it. Rowlett, isn't that terrible? Do you want to say it again in case the people missed it? So, in Zetman, the titular Zetman, mm. for reasons that I don't even begin to remember to understand, he has a condom embedded in his hand. Except it isn't really a condom, it's just, it looks like a condom, folks, okay? It looks like a condom. Just go look at some screen caps. Do you want to talk about some of the actual, actually big anime this season? Uh, like... Like, like how about Hyoka, aka your favorite show of the Hyoka season? Hyoka big. Hyoka... Hyoka was big. It was kind of a sleeper, though. It did Yes, it was so a sleeper. So it was a rare one in that uh, this did not get a streaming license. Mm. Um, oh, yes. Because this and... Because KyoAni uh, was having a weird rep. Uh... So KyoAni's the studio that from time to time just will not license for streaming their stuff because mm. you know what else happened? Um, wasn't Amagi Brilliant Park didn't get a streaming license initially. Mm. I don't think it got any streaming licenses until after it ended. Which is weird. Hyoka did finally get a license for release in the West mm. within the past, I think, year, maybe two years. Because Hyoka's held up as... Maybe their best work, apart from A Silent Voice uh, like their for Kiwani. Best, their most polished and, well, I think as a comprehensive whole, it's probably mm. considered one of their better ones. Like Harry, he was bigger, but modern fans don't talk about Harry and stuff like Kyoka. I don't know that modern fans talk about Kyoka, to be honest, That's either. That's uh, true, I guess. Although, you know, there was the accessibility issue, certainly, mm. caused issue there. Kyoka's just, it's a good show uh it's nothing particularly earth shattering but it's just it's a very good show it follows you know there's a it starts off with a fairly withdrawn young man who isn't that interested in participating too much in high school life uh because as we realize oh he is crippling confidence issues that's why he's pretending he doesn't give a shit and he ends up getting pulled into this literature club and you know one of his friends is part of it and is trying to cajole him into like hey dude come on let's do some of the high school stuff and he meets a young woman there who is i would argue she's what changes his life mm -hmm. because this is a girl named chitanda and she slowly but surely not even because she's trying, just because of the sort of person she is, pulls him out of his shell. Mm. Uh, and it turns out he's very good at solving mysteries. These are not particularly earth-shattering mysteries either. It's things like, why is this book missing from the library? Or, you know, why is this, uh, why was this door left open? It's very low-level stuff. There is a portion where it's, what did this member of the uh, movie club mean to be the ending of the movie that they're filming for the school festival? But it's, it's really good. It's got good character work. The cast is only, the core cast is only four people and you just get to know them very well over the course of the show. 
I really liked it. Mm. Uh, I was a little frustrated with one of the aspects of the conclusion, but on the whole, I quite enjoyed it. I think it's too bad that it took so long for it to get a license because I think that a lot of people haven't gotten to it because they just, you couldn't get it. I would argue it is own, it's not even the second biggest show this season. It's probably the third biggest. Oh, I, I would never argue for it being Because it, it was quite popular. But yeah, this also... but it was, it was more of a sleeper type yes. thing. Yes. I'd say it's I didn't start watching it initially. I came to it. It was one of those mm. shows that I don't think many people were watching off the mm. bat, but people went back to it. Yeah. Uh, but one thing that was definitely bigger than this was this was the start of the Kuroko's basketball. Oh, God. See, I was thinking Kids on the Slope was pretty big. Well, it's Kids on the Slope. So Kids on the Slope was the return of director Shinichiro Watanabe uh-huh. for the first time since Shampoo, basically. No. Yeah, no, Shampoo. Or did he do Michiko Tahachin? I don't I think he know. just no, he I just did the just... music. He just did the music set because that's actually Saya Yamamoto. Yes. Yeah, no, so it's his first direct... I also think it's the sort of thing you look at and you think, well he must be involved somehow. Hmm. But yeah, so he did this um adaptation of a Jose manga set in nineteen fifties. No, nineteen sixties Japan. Nineteen sixties Japan Because like, they had the student movement in it, which really yeah. comes up in the sixties. Yeah, and all the and about these kids playing jazz music. Um It's, it's very, also very gay without wanting to admit that it's very gay. It's very well produced, which you kind of expect. It's it, I think this might even be the birth of Mappa as a studio. I think it is, is actually. It? I think so, yeah. Maybe. Um Unfortunately, I think I some of the more dramatic elements just get increasingly ridiculous and just like, oh, God, Christ, just go back to the nice music. I like the music. I just, I really despise the story, the way the story went with regards to the rich girl. Mm. Um, one thing I did really like, though, mm. was when he, so the young man, he's living with <coughs> relatives and mm. his relatives don't really get him. Mm. And his relatives also tend to be like, well, your mom was a sloppy whore. Hmm. They don't say quite that blatantly, hmm. but it's the implication. I've just realized how much the characters in this are basically the exact same as the characters in Rakugo. Show it yeah. in Rakugo, they're basically the same, aren't they? That's, they're very similar. Similar era, well, I mean, no, Rakugo kind of passes through this era, but yeah. It does. Oh, that's interesting. I never really considered that before. They get happier endings, so yes. Um, I like how it. I like what they end up allowing for mm. their female character. Mm. But there was one particular episode where the lead goes to see his mother. His mother lives in Tokyo, and they meet at you know just a casual restaurant. And I appreciated the degree to which that wasn't particularly dramatic. Mm. And the degree to which the show wasn't interested in demonizing his mother. Because I think that anime is still very bad about that kind of thing. Mm. I think most shows do want to. It's quite similar to the way Bunny Drop treated when they met the mother of the mm. uh, of the kid. Yeah. But I liked that a lot. Uh, there's a Yeah, the show was a bit... It didn't quite... It could, um, it there was, were parts of it that I really liked, but yeah. there were also parts of it that I was really like... Same here. <sighs> I think I think they're slightly... Both of, the, both of them are slightly different. Um, the parts that both of us like, but both of us don't like. But like all spread out all over the show. Mm-hmm. Both, both of us came quite conflicted. This The other Noitamina show this season was Suritama, which I still see people occasionally bring up. Someone I follow was recently, recently re-watching this. Hmm. Did the director get a more recent project or something? So the director is the person who did Mononoke. I th- I'm 90% certain it's okay. that guy. Um, I'm not personally a huge fan of Suritama. It's very I've colorful. I've never seen it. It's very colorful and I feel like it's the kind of thing I should like but didn't, <laughs> unfortunately. It's the sort of thing I can look at and appreciate that it exists yeah. Yeah, without I, feeling a need to go watch I it. I think I guess I resent it more because I felt like I should have liked it and didn't. It's about fishing and oh. there's a guy in a turban with a duck. Isn't this the guy who did the Digimon Tri movies? Oh, is Am he? Am I hallucinating? I, no Do idea. I completely make that up? I, I may have completely made that up, so don't believe me. Phones are banned from this podcast now. After Yeah, they screw up the microphone. <laughs> um, are we supposed to be... Yeah, so like, so you think 
uh, Kids on the Slope was bigger than Hyoka. So that would make yeah. it Hyoka the fourth biggest. So oh. the third biggest is the second biggest then, I guess, is... Uh, what are, how do we measure big in this case? Uh, impact and impact sales. Are we talking about sales. just the West? No, because the, the might is going to say the big way. Anyway, but first of all, um, Kuroko's basketball is oh, the reason yeah. why we have the sports anime boom. It's the reason we have Q. Hmm. It's the reason we have... Yeah, it's just the sports Thank anime. Thank God Production IG used better animation yes. than it's they kid, did for this. There was a point there where Kuroko was huge. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. I didn't really like it. I watched, I, like, ten episodes. I felt like I could have liked it if I stuck with it in the same way I stuck with Haikyuu, but... Some of the gimmicks were just a bit too much for me. Oh, I was fine with Oh, it. what? He has no presence, so I didn't see him there on the court. What? Uh, but I can Look, kinda... dudes, I know he's really short for a basketball player, but come on. I can kind of get into that in a dumb shonen any kind of way. <sighs> The problem is what... It was what, played up a little too much. I see. I can get into that. The problem You know with, what? It was... I don't like the overreactions. Oh, but that's... So I wouldn't like it in this case either. Oh, I like... See, that's stuff I can get into. But where it really lacked... Because like, I didn't really care that much for the characters. And what kept me through high Q to the early episode before I started to get really invested was how incredible it looked. And yeah. kids on the... Uh, not kids on the... Sorry. Kuroko's back. Looked, looked like crap. Looked like crap. Looked like ass. Which is a shame. That's uh, why they had to have very colorful hairstyles. Yes, because otherwise you couldn't. It's just a bunch of various buff blokes. <laughs> it's the modern slam dunk. I think slam oh dunk is considered God. better. Someone's going to come through the screen and punch you in the face for that. But you know what the actual biggest thing is? Purely in, the, in Japan, mind you. Space Battleship Yamato 2199. Oh, not Mysterious Girlfriend X. Okay. I mean, do you want to talk about Mysterious Girlfriend X? No, AKA, no, you can talk about AKA the, the anime that loads people convince, tries to convince you is actually totally deep and meaningful until eventually you are starting to watch it and after a point it's like, she's just swallow, sw- spit, no. Anyway, Yamato, which probably doesn't have, well, Yamato's bots though. Yamato has incredible bots. Oh my word. Have you seen the bots in that show? I, there's a lot of gifts. Yes. Um... So this was a remake. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Yes. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. It is the remake of the original Space Battles with Yamato from like 1974, mm. which is um, for many people considered like, if you consider the track of modern anime, it goes Astro Boy and then Yamato, basically. <laughs> maybe love pro- Little Witch Sally, huh? I was going to maybe Princess Knight or something like that. But, um, like, everything can be traced back to... The, because it's this... Well, I guess Astro Boy sci-fi, what am I saying? But, yeah, it's... Um, it was huge, but, like, it's from 1974. No one's fucking going back and watching that. So they did a remake version where they changed a bunch of the details. They did things like, in the original anime, for example, the, ca- the alien's uh, skin color changed halfway through for some reason. And they, they changed the plot to justify that in this season. Okay. Shit like that. But it's actually just a really, really solid science fiction show. Um, lots of like weird, cool, its own invention of science, kind of good questions about the power of warfare and, you know, fighting for humanity and, this, and things like that. And just a really solid science fiction show with fantastic with, with fantastic butts. Um, this was really solid as like OVAs and, no, they really, no, really as like movies that they didn't really say sold at the cinema kind of thing mm. and they did incredibly well in japan as opposed to movies that you sell on a street corner well no like you don't sell them <laughs> you, don't, you don't sell them at the cinema oh you mean dvd yeah yeah that's actually not an unusual practice mm. but yamato was that one of those that like did in it. japan yes yamato was one well, of those that did in it in art house cinemas well too. yeah art house cinemas yeah but yeah uh, I really like this show. It's actually my favorite thing because uh, there's not much to see and actually like that much. Yamato is though is one of the ones I really like. Um, definitely my favorite of this season. You know, I have a feeling that if we're talking about hits from the season though. Mm. I, I just have a sneaking feeling that Excel World sold decently. Maybe yeah. not mega, but decently because it's you know the Sword Art Online guy. That's the thing though. This felt like this was what the Excel. The Sword Art Online guy wrote before. No, he wrote this after, but it came out. But the anime came out before Sword Art Online. 
But we'll have all the time in the world to talk about that because Sword Art Online is next season. You don't want to talk about Excel World? It's shite. It's one of my best reviews. It's one of my uh, most liked reviews on Mal, though. Look, is there a more, like, edgy teen name than naming your heroine Kuro Yukihime? That's a pretty edgy name. Yeah. There must be more edgy or hairy or heroine names. I don't know. That's pretty... How about calling them, how about call them the Dirty Pair? Yeah, but that's like the <laughs> moniker for the group. They're actually, actually, no, you know, now that I'm looking at it, there's some shows this season that I liked. Yeah, like Bread of Happiness. Oh my god. Bread of Happiness is maybe one of the most. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce this word. Vac, vac, vacuous? Vacuous? Vacuous anime ever created. It's just three Look, just. Look, it's for people who like buxom lasses making bread i mean yeah what's it's like, like what's oh, wrong with that why yeah. hold it against it because they because they're just complete like dead eyes like yes oh hello i don't remember his name yuji kun here's our bread yuji kun why don't you suck on our juicy bread yuji kun i don't know anyway <laughs> what wow i guess it got racier than i would have expected um but like some stuff i actually quite like this season bread the is good your nails is good. Bread is justice. Actually, you know, now that I, I love, I ultimately I ended up not watching all of this show because it got, it kind of didn't go anywhere after a certain point. But there are times where I absolutely fucking love Space Brothers. Oh yeah. Space Brothers is. This ran for a while too. Yeah, that's a, and it shouldn't have really. It should have stopped at a certain point. But um, <laughs> there. Well, because that was pretty lengthy. Yeah, it was just it was it needed to move faster. There's there's some th scenes where it's like. It's like, and his mutter sitting on a... So this show is about two brothers who... Um, oh, because the show opens with, like, the main character headbutting his boss while yelling Zidane, which I think is one of the best fucking ways to open an anime. Anyway, um, the main, so these two brothers, they, they see a UFO, and they're like, we're going to be astronauts, and then they go up, and the younger brother becomes an astronaut and is on his way to the moon, and Mutter's just been fired from his job for headbutting his boss. Um, and then it kind of follows Mutter trying to become an astronaut and succeeding, sort of, and while also following his brother. Um, and it's really kind of... I remember someone saying they stopped watching the show because they found it too uplifting and they felt bad. Wait, what? It's uplift because it's like, it's all about chasing your dreams. You can do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess I understand. Yeah, now. and it was just like, I'm just, I, I'm not, I don't have the same energy that this show has for chasing your dreams. <laughs> You know, it just, it made me really wish uh. that Twin Speaker had gotten a full adaptation. Mm. Twin Speaker was a long-running manga that also involved people Very similar space. stories, yeah. Yeah, but it dealt with kids, and yeah. it also dealt with... The first thing that happens is that Japan's first attempt at a manned mission fails, mm. and it crashes in a, an inhabited area, and a lot of people die, mm. including the lead's mother. But, yeah, um, Space Brothers has lots of... Uh, there's just lots of little things that are really good about this, like the pug that, that his parents, main character's parents, has, and how his dad wears, like, pyjamas that yeah, says pyjama across the front. Or, you know, just his afro in general, or... There's just lots of... Or, like, his the internal monologues, he is constantly running about how much he's like, he's like, oh, God, I'm going to fuck up. And the, Space Brothers is... I have a lot. I've, I have time for Space Brothers. You know, it is actually quite good. It's just at a certain point, it was like, why am I sitting here watching Musha think about his dreams while on a, you know, driving, what's it, what do they call it? A drive on lawnmower. <laughs> and I was just like, I've, this is two episodes of this. This is stupid. I stopped watching it. And I feel like I failed as a person for stopping to watching it. Holy shit, that was deep. Yeah. I feel like I failed you, Space Brothers. You know it wasn't deep. What? Yarko san. <laughs> Yarko san, which is AKA what else? What Another el crawling chaos. Yarko san. What else could we possibly anthropomorphize? I know. How about Cthulhu? What if Cthulhu was a cute girl yeah. in a short skirt? Yeah. And then they. This was. I want to say this was preceded by an OVA. Because there was a flash short first. Yeah. Yeah, and then it this was. End, a, I think it had a sequel too. It did yeah. decently. Yeah. <laughs> the girl was cute. It's just you know, it's <laughs> it's it's a harem show that, other than them all being, you know, Lovecraftian horrors, but cute girls, mm. wasn't that much else to it. 
Speaking I will of, say this though. You know, if there's an afterlife, yeah, I am glad this exists solely for the fact that Lovecraft would go absolutely fucking ape shit if he knew about. Because my God, was he racist? Oh yeah, he would lose his shit over this. So I'm glad it exists. Yeah. Speaking of Lovecraftian horrors, imagine a world in which the polar bears took over. Polar bear cafe. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is uh, that a Lovecraftian horror? This, uh, I know. If oh you're... God, they are because they are white. <laughs> because there's a panda as well and a penguin. I will. I see a lot of white fur on both of these. Ah, uh, that's true. Well, it's white um, and black. He'd probably think that pandas were miscegenation. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> well, we've got very deep into the. I mean, everyone knows that Lovecraft was a racist by now. Um, we're getting there. We're getting there. But yeah, polar bear. Are, I you know I wasn't into polar bear cafe, but this is one of these shows that I keep seeing. I see get mentioned outside of anime circles. Like, oh yeah, what's your show? It's called Polar Bear Cafe. It's about polar bear runs a cafe. It's pretty great. <laughs> and it's like well, you watch anime. It's an anime. It's like oh, I guess it wasn't Japanese. <laughs> I, it's got this weird spread. I don't get it. Anyway, I was talking about anime. I actually kind of liked from this season. And now, granted, I remember nothing about this because it was basically like shitty or Black Lagoon. <laughs> But I do remember quite liking Jormungand. Oh! I, but unfortunately, the only thing I can remember about it now is that the is that all the guys were incredibly and girls actually were incredibly buff, and that the next episode preview had the song that went, "Her name is Coco, she is loco." I said, "Oh no!" And of course, everyone would tweet that after the episode. Yep. Yeah. I think it got a sequel. Yeah, it did. Um, like it did all right, and like again, I, I remember quite liking it. It's just now all I can remember about it was that it was shitty Black Lagoon, wow, which is un- that does not sound like an endorsement. Okay, budget Black Lagoon is called okay. it then. Yeah. Yeah, because you're saying you liked it, but now you're like it was shitty Black Lagoon. Yeah. Lagoon. yeah well, that's because Black Lagoon is amazing, but yeah. But you're never gonna get more Black. Lagoon. No, no. I should probably go back and rewatch the original Black Lagoon at some point. What else do you want me to say that'll hurt you? Anyway, uh, you could say that actually, like, why did you watch all of San Correa Scamp? I mean, I know the answer. Because it was secretly quite quite good. Until it wasn't. Well, so the really thing to mention about San Correa is that it is incredibly well directed. For like, I mean, it, it is a it's it's a shitty rom com shonen rom com thing about a guy who falls in love with a cute girl who's a zombie. Um, oh yeah, isn't he really obsessed with zombies? Yes, yes, he's big into because like because the opie is all well because again the director did such a good job with this and like kind of changed the material a bit, but ultimately because it was a hell of a lot less like the original material was just like very che- like very like cheesecakey, and this one actually gave it a lot more like character, a lot more meaning while still keeping the fun to it. But then ultimately the shittiness of the um, of the original manga kind of caught up with it. You know. San Correa was one of the first titles that I believe Kodansha USA hmm. released. Hmm. And bizarrely, I ended up with a copy of the first volume because hmm. Anime Boston 2013, Kodansha USA had a panel. Mm-hmm. And they had, they were, I forget why they were giving out volumes. It was if you, like, did something. Maybe if you asked a question. Hmm. And you got a copy of San Correa? Yeah, not that I wanted it, but... They redid the front cover for when they released it in the West. And when, when people complained, and then they stood the side by side, and I was like, oh yeah, because the original cover is kind of crap, and this one's better. Yeah, it was actually a pretty decent cover. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the first things that they released. Anyway. I, I understand it was quite a big hit as well. Um, I got, was quite big at the time, San Correa. Well, like, it was reasonably big. But the reason why it's important is because I remember at the time thinking... This is bad, but directed incredibly well. I will keep an eye on what this director later does. And he went on to do... Showa Era Rakugo Shinju. Speaking mm. of that. Also went on to do uh, Love is War, actually. God, we've met, mentioned, mentioned... Rakugo, yeah. Twice in this episode. That's impressive. Yeah, so he went on to do... And like you can actually really see his directorial chops. I mean, Rakugo was incredibly strong source material, so he did, he did a good job with it. But again, but Love is War... 
is another one that is, you can really see just how strong him and his team specifically in general hmm. are because they're ex-Shaft people hmm. and you can sort of see that it's not as bonkers as Shimbo is but it's so like I'm just say it's sort of like Shaft without some of the more obnoxious ticks. Yeah. but yeah you can definitely see that in um, some of like maybe less so Rakugo but even Rakugo it's an understated directing but it worked really well yeah and um yeah, so that's I, that's why I want to bring up Sign Career because it was where I recognised that this guy was had talent. Going places. He's going places, and he's made some of the best directed anime. Well, one of the best anime straight up of the decade. Yeah. Um, Letter to Momo. Yeah. Um, Have you seen it? Yes. Oh. I saw it at the Museum of Fine Art in Boston. In fact. And okay. Well, after it was original. <laughs> 2012 it came out mm. probably saw it in 2013 oh god because i also picked up they happened to have um a bunch of the manga put out by drawn and quarterly for sale in the shop and i left my copy of one of them under my seat and i never saw it again Very sad. um this is a movie that i kept thinking it was it was at its climax and it was ending and then it kept going mm. Uh, I think this movie should have been 20 to 30 minutes shorter than it was because it kept going at a point where it was like, okay, I thought we've kind of finished the story, folks. Why are we still here? Um, it's okay. It's not great. Uh, I forgot about this one, actually. Is um, uh, Fujiko Mine. God, uh, how could you forget? Lupin the Third, Fuji Tits, as it became known. Uh... Okay, as I call it. You call that. It was like, we're going to do like a mature, artsy one for very mature ladies, basically. Well, lots of, the lots staff of was nude... primarily women, wasn't it? Yeah, not? it's Saya Yamamoto. We've mentioned her before in this, haven't we? Yeah, I think so. Um, who later went on to do, most known for... Blood Blockade? No, no. Uh, Wrong no, director. sorry. Wrong... Rhea Matsumoto. Yeah, Saya um, Yamamoto is best known Yuri for... Yuri on Isu. Um, she'd done a bunch like we uh, yeah we mentioned Michiko to Hatch and that's what we did she did that and she but she'd worked on a lot of very good anime like she'd done work on things like Death Note and um, I just remember Death Note because she and like a bunch of anyway I don't remember what they are but she'd done loads of really good anime and it was like she was poised for a breakout hit Michiko to Hatch didn't quite do it mm. there are people who loved it but it was wasn't never hit and it was like Fujiko Mine is like, oh, we're doing this weird artsy take on the Lupin series focusing on Fu uh, Mine Fujiko. And there are definitely people out there who liked it. The people who like it really like it. Yeah. I, you know, it is something I would like to go back and give another chance mm. because I'll admit in the first episode after she whips off her golden bikini top and uses it to... Uh, What's that called? Zip line her way out of a bad situation. Hmm. I was a bit like, come on, folks. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's kind of what the whole show felt. I, I actually didn't like it, but much later on, when watching like the other new Lupin stuff, I kind of mm. realized, I just don't like Fujiko Mine. Yeah, so you've said. Yeah. I don't like Femme Fatale, it turns out. Um, Ooh, that's funny since you married one. Oh. You're not a... <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever zip line down something using your bra? <laughs> no, but I use someone else's. Anyway, that was um, Fujiko Mine. Yeah. But yeah, so like this wasn't our breakout hit. Our breakout hit ended up being, of course, Yuri on Ice. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I should go back and try it again. Yeah, it seemed like she just had picked a series that she had fun with more so where then trying to. Whereas it felt like in Fujiko Mini, they were really trying to make an artistic statement that fell flat. But again, there are people who really oh, like it. I don't it. think that's what I'd call flat. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of people who aren't flat, Madaka Box. Oh, God. Uh, actually, speaking of, isn't this from... Nisi Oison. Yes. It's also, so I mentioned in a previous podcast that um, Gynex died. Uh, actually, this was Gynex, I'd forgotten. Yeah. But it was like... The fuck knows who these people even were. It was probably like Gynex Shell and they just... Anyway, it wasn't very good, but I think no one thought it was very good. 
Even you know, I liked the lead, Madaka. She was kind of... She's kind of a force of nature, she's and kind I appreciate of, that. Yeah, she's kind of like Jesus. Yeah. 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 I liked her a bunch, but the yeah. rest of the cast is kind of like, wait, I don't even remember who the rest of the cast was. Yeah, because like it has it has its moments. Like It's written by Nisio, Mr. Monica Tarry Man, um, but I think over time I've realized that like... I secretly don't actually like that style of writing. <laughs> I just like the Monogatari series because of the way it's presented. Because mm. um, a lot of the other kind yeah, of Madaka like... Yeah, Box's presentation is much shite. more straightforward. Shite. Uh, I could have sworn that also Madaka Box's uh, manga ran in Jump. But yes, could be wrong. it was a Jump manga. And it kept nearly being cancelled. Yeah, it was always the one that just managed to hold on. Yeah. It ran for a decent number yeah. of volumes. Surprisingly, but the problem was then uh, by the I think people said it started to basically at some point the author came it was increasingly clear for the author that it was going to be cancelled soon so he started to just write the most utter nonsense like just like the guys if Nisio's got some he's got some writing chops but it's a very roundabout way of writing and he just completely indulged in his ridiculous writing towards the end. Oh, that sounds obnoxious. Yes, it was just like I don't, an, think I, I don't really dig his stuff to begin with. Hmm. Um, but now I have to somehow leapfrog from a DACA box to Hiro no Kakura, and I genuinely cannot think of any way of doing that. What is Hiro no Kakura? This was an Otome adaptation that oh. centered around, um... Shinsengumi? No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's still, like, older school stuff in the sense that it was about the, um... It's like... It's centered around Japanese myth and legend having to do with um, a princess. I can't remember the name for her, though. Uh, this, I only mention it really because it's like, well, this was the Otome adaptation of the season. Oh. Um, How much did you watch? I, it was really boring. I oh, watched okay. an episode. It was deathly dull. Hmm. Uh Look, I mean, you, you got about one of these a season at this point. It kind of trundles itself along. Hmm. Looking at it, I feel this sense of, I'm so glad that the genre slowly, slowly seems to be moving away from this kind of, you know, dishwater dull stuff featuring very boring and very ineffectual female leads. Yeah. So it's sort of, you know... Look at how it used to be, and look at how it is now. We are making progress. Although Prince Sama predated this, so I don't know yeah. what its excuse is. Uh, I think we nearly covered everything. There's... Well, you know, there's the one that was, like, Studio 4C did an oh. ad for Prius. Oh, yes. You, you talked about this, and I was like, I don't remember this it at all. It was very colorful. I don't remember anything. Was this the one where the... Where the um... The, the girls were, like, on broomsticks, and the broomsticks made car revving noises? No, no, that was uh, After School Pleiades, oh, which yes. was uh, Subaru's effort. Okay. Because Subaru is the name for the constellation in Japanese. Okay. Uh, no, this was just, like, it was about Priuses. <laughs> uh, it was really colorful. It definitely was well made visually. I don't remember anything else. I want to say there's a guy... There's a woman, and she's driving and a they Prius. Fall. <laughs> I don't think it gets that deep. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is it really that funny that she's driving a fucking Prius? No, it's just a, there's a guy, there's a woman, and as the classic story goes, they drove a Prius. <laughs> yeah, she's driving they fall a in Prius. Love? No. I think she's a free spirit, you know, magic pixie car girl or whatever. <laughs> magic pixie. She's not a car, though. She um, just drives magic, the car. Magic, magic Prius dream girl. I, recently, I ran across man, manic pixie uh, dream geezer, which I appreciated. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. Does there a Prius involved, though? Mm, no, because well, they live I in don't. London, so of course there's no car involved. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, and anyway, that's it. I also uh, put I put an Ashi Kachi here, but I don't actually feel like talking about it. I wouldn't either. And that was it for this season. I, I we're going to leave it off on the on the uh, magic Prius. No magic, manic Prius dream girl. Manic Prius dream girl. And will you be my manic Prius dream girl? Um, 
God, I'm trying to think which song to send us out with. Probably the Yamato. The Yamato. Uchu Senken Yamato. Oh, God. We should cut it off before <laughs> you keep singing at the bare minimum. See you next week. Bye.